Hello Internet, I'm Guy. This video is about the construction of a weird art clock. My friend Dave and I have been making these for the last several years. This I think is like number 10, I'm not really sure. Uh, this one is going to be interesting because it's going to use a technology that's normally used in earth moving equipment. What I'm talking about is this thing right here, which is otherwise known as an inclinometer, but this branded item is a Levo gauge. The idea here is you mount this inside a piece of earth moving equipment and it'll let you know how far you are tilted over so you don't fall over and tip the machine over. Um, so I've taken this one apart and found that inside is a little glass tube like this with a little ball in it. This is a brass ball and it's a glass tube filled with oil so it slows down the movement so it doesn't move too quickly. We're going to mount this inside a clock so that it will turn on its center of axis here and move so that the ball will point at a, a series of dots indicating where the time is. So if it's all the way over here, it might be say 1 a.m. and all the way over here it might be 11 p.m. Uh, we'll, we'll figure out little markings for that eventually. So um, on my right here you'll see some renderings as Dave and I proceed through the design phase. He does a series of renderings that are iterations of how we're evolving the design and we finally settled on this design which is a brass face and walnut on the outside. So those are the two primary materials I'll be fabricating today and um, if you're interested in more about these clocks I will give you a link in the description below to both my web page and also the playlist on my YouTube channel of other clocks that we've done so far. But today I'm going to jump in and start by showing you how I built the electronics my first step once we've locked the design of a project is to design the schematic. Uh, if you're interested I'll link to this below so you can access it or you can just uh, do a screen capture. But we're talking about a stepper motor here that will move the clock face around and this is a stepper motor driver. Uh, this is a microcontroller that I will program. I will write the firmware that goes in here. Incidentally firmware is software that goes into hardware. So this will be just a chip that has the software in it, which again is called firmware. This is a real-time clock so that once you've set the time, if you were to unplug the unit, it would remember the time because it has a battery backup here and it'll store that time and then you can just turn it on and it'll, it'll remember the time. You've got set buttons here for minutes and hours. This is a power supply here. It'll be a brick power supply, 24 volts at 3 amps. And then this is a voltage regulator that drops power for all of the low voltage stuff here. And this is a uh, Adafruit uh, momentary touch switch circuit that I'm plugging in. So let me just show you what I've built here. This is everything that I've constructed so far. This is a little battery holder the uh, real-time clock chip, the touch switch board, and the microcontroller chip that I'll be programming. So this is all ready to go. Incidentally, I wired this using 1980s or 70s technology. Gosh, it even started in the 1960s. Uh, this is called wire wrapping, and it's a wonderful way to prototype stuff that has gone out of fashion over the last few decades. But I still have all the tools and equipment to do this. And it goes very quickly. It's really a nice way to whip together a circuit um, without having to design a circuit board or do hand point-to-point -point soldering. So here's the parts all laid out. This is a 24 volt power brick, the circuitry I just showed you, the stepper motor driver and the stepper motor. And of course we've got the level gauge here. This is a piece of brass that is coated in uh, blue plastic, so we'll get that out of the way for now. That's going to be the clock face of course. This is uh, what was originally a four foot length of 12 inch wide walnut, which was quite expensive, but getting four 12 inch wide uh, wood of any kind is expensive. It was originally rough sawn, and I ran it through my friend's very wide jointer and planer to get it all smoothed off. This is going to allow me to cut four circular pieces that will get, then get glued together to make the ring that is the outside part of this clock. Because of the way this tree was cut, this is the outer part of the tree right here. I don't have my full 12 inch diameter uh, available or, or width of the board. So um, I'm going to go 11 and a half inches here. Thank you. 
After cutting out these four pieces, this check is not going to work because it goes all the way through here, so I can't really use that. Um, but this, these three pieces together are a nice proportion of uh, diameter to thickness, and the stepper motor fits comfortably inside of here. It's probably going to sit right about that height, um, and then I'll attach the clock face to it, and that will fit in here. So what I need to do now is cut out uh, a circle here to remove the, the uh, material that will be inside where the clock face will be, and then in here I'm going to cut out a section where all the electronics will be, so this will be in here. I'm going to leave this one uncut, and this will be allow, me, allow me to mount it to the lathe once these are all glued up. So now I've got this cut out, I have these two surfaces that need to meet and get glued back together again. I'm going to use uh, medium thick cyanoacrylate or CA glue. What I'll do is apply some on each side here and then apply some InstaSet on the other side and hope it all bonds together perfectly. This is going to be a bit of a nail biter here I think. Okay, there's plenty on there. There's plenty on there, and put some accelerator on here. Yeah, let's see if I can get all this to come together nicely. Just holding it together. You can always hoot, shoot a little bit more of this into the joint there. Okay, so here goes the scary part. Gluing up this will be the back ring, and this is the front ring over here. So that one will sit on there like that. And then this one will flip over. Okay, the camera battery died as I started the glue up, but I think you can see that I've got plenty of glue in there throughout, it looks like. Dripping off a little bit there. So now I'm mounting a faceplate to the wood so that I can put it up on the lathe. And here I go, spinning it up onto the lathe. Get it uh, settled in. Oh, I better use the locking pin. There we go. And that's set up, ready to go. Uh-oh, looks like I've got a flaw in the walnut here that I did not see when I cut this out. It must have been hidden. I'm going to figure out how to fill that, maybe with some uh, brown epoxy. I've never tried this stuff before, but it's time I learned how to do epoxy pour. So, 50-50 of this stuff. Some of this stuff in here. I really don't know how much to use, but we'll see if that's going to work. Yeah, that looks good. They say to mix it for several minutes, but that's a small amount, so I don't think I need to mix for minutes. Okay, so I think this is pretty well mixed up. Get the excess off of there. Try pouring a little bit in there and then I'm going to try and poke it in with toothpicks. Oh man, it's really going in there. Yeah, I think that's... That's pretty settled in there. All right. 
Okay, this is dried good and hard, so I'm ready to spin this up again and start shaping the outside of this thing. I'm starting with the outside surface to get that all smoothed and leveled out and get the uh, residual epoxy off of the rim there. I'm using a bowl gouge here to just clean that surface up and make a nice clean cut. Now here on the inside edge, uh, this is part of that inside edge will be exposed, so I'm going to make a nice clean cut here to smooth that all out and get it more concentric. I want everything to be concentric, obviously, so that the brass disc that will rotate inside of here will look right. This is a relief I'm doing for the motor mount bracket that I have yet to build. That will be in the next video. So I'm just doing a bit of a recess there because that piece of aluminum will be about an eighth of an inch thick. So now I'm sanding that front surface. That will be the one surface that will be visible and there'll be a bunch of screws there holding on a clear front plate to cover the electronics and the, um, the brass uh, display face, if you will. So I'm just sanding inside of there and again on the outside too. Uh, just get it all sanded down smooth, nice. This is a Sorby Sandmaster sanding disc holder and I really like this tool. Uh, you just replace the discs with uh, you know, Velcro discs, two inch discs. I'm drilling a hole here now. This is a first size hole and then a larger hole that I will drill shortly to open it up so that the stepper motor can go through and inset into the back there partly. This is the, the bigger drill. This is the biggest Forstner bit I have. It's a two and an eighth inch hole here. So there it is all the way through. And I'm actually bottoming it out to the face plate so I can clean all that wood out all the way through. There it is, you can see the faceplate inside. So now I'm busting that loose and I'm going to then flip it over so I can finish the other side. I'll take the faceplate off. Now I've got my coal jaws on here, that's an expandable jaw with rubber, uh, what we call rubber baby bumpers on there. Uh, that will expand and dilate and grip the uh, side that I just finished. So now I'm going to make this whole interior wall concentric. As you can see, it's not, so I have to take off a fair amount of material there. This is the back side. Uh, it's important to have it concentric just so that it looks nice. As you notice, of course, the curved section is on the back surface of the clock. So I'm using my square carbide insert uh, tool to square it up and true it up, make it smooth. And now I'm going to make a recess right here for the cover that will go on the back, which will be a piece of 8 inch black acrylic. And there will also be ventilation slots and a small ventilation fan because the motor is going to be quite hot. Um, I actually measured the temperature of the motor and it's going to be running at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. This piece of 8 inch black acrylic will drop into this recess and be held in there with uh, 12 brass screws, just like the front face essentially. So now I'm just checking depth here, and it's deep enough for the electronics, but then when I look at the power brick that has to go in there, I think it's a little too th shallow. Checking that depth, yeah, I've got to go in about a quarter inch deeper right here. So once again, I'm going to jump in with my carbide insert tool, which has the square end on it, and make a bunch of light passes. This chuck doesn't grip the wood very, very firmly like a metal chuck would. So I'm going to do very light passes and keep working my way in until I get it deep enough that, yes, that's going to clear just fine. So now I'm just double checking that the motor will fit in that hole that I drilled and it fits perfectly. Okay, so I've put shellac a couple of coats on, uh, this is the back. This is where I'm going to put a back faceplate here and the electronics will sit in here. And so now I'm going to flip it over and just put some shellac on the front surface, which is where the flat acrylic, clear acrylic face will screw on, and then the face will be in here, the, the brass clock face. So that's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next video where I'll build the clock face out of brass and acrylic and mount the components and the motor and so forth inside. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see the next video, Please subscribe so you can follow me and hit the notification bell and then you'll know exactly when the next video comes out. And if you want to uh, give me a like or a super like, please do. 
And uh, also you can support me on Patreon. I could always use that support. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.